What's up, folks? Here at uh, CH2M Alumni Center. You can see it here. Okay. We're here for the big, the big, the big signing day. What's up, man? Hey. hey. We're here for signing day for um, the Irwin's big donation for whale research. I'm very excited. We're gonna meet Bindi. We're gonna check it out. Terry Irwin and all that. So. Lobby. Lobby. So we're we're very excited to check this thing out. Uh, get back to you in a few minutes with some footage. Say hi, Blake. Blake's here too. Whole crew's here. Rock on. Okay, we'll see you in a few. Steph, he had arranged a research voyage to Antarctica that was was to have been uh, filmed for a television uh, program. When it was learned that uh, many of the arrangements could not be rescinded, the Irwins had the ship captain offer the trip to another deserving researcher. Uh, for only minor costs, and Bruce Mate and the Marine Mammal Institute were the team that they reached out to. Bruce has been working for several years to arrange such a trip and accepted the offer with gratitude. Within a few months, Bruce's team was tagging humpback whales in Antarctica to discover their migration routes. Bruce named one of the whales Steve. He later wrote a letter to Terry expressing his condolences and letting her know about the whale named in her husband's honor. By sheer happenstance, uh, she found the letter in a pretty tall stack of uh, correspondences, I guess, from around the world, and replied to Bruce, expressing her interest in making a difference in whale protection and conservation. She invited Bruce and his wife to uh, travel to Australia to discuss the idea further and to be her guests at the Australia Zoo, which the Irwins uh, own. The results of those discussions uh, is the memorandum of understanding that we'll be signing here today. Yet another way in which Terry and her family have so selflessly turned tragedy into a deepened commitment to the ideals for which uh, Steve and, and stood and for which she and her family still stand. We have two very exciting projects we're going to take on uh, this year with Terry's sponsorship. We're going to be studying humpback whales in the area of Unimac Pass near the base of the Aleutian Islands. This is an area where we know from Scott Baker's work that the genetics tell us there's a mixed feeding aggregation of animals that are going to migrate to their breeding territories in uh, both Hawaii and in Costa Rica off of Central America. That mixed aggregation is going to be a less expensive place for us to study that phenomena than our ultimate target, which will be the Antarctic. We hope to be able to do that work in the next several years ahead based on the guidance we get from this project. Um, it's an area that's very exciting. And the second project we're doing in the Southern Hemisphere is in American Samoa. It is one of 4,000 islands that makes up Oceania. Uh, it's a place where humpback whales occur, but we really don't know very much about where they're going to go for their feeding season. We expect it's uh, not only in Antarctica, but probably somewhat to the east of Strait South. And some of these things may sound kind of esoteric, but in reality, the Japanese are proposing hunting humpback whales this next season. And we don't know what when they take humpback whales in the air, even which stocks they'll be harvesting from. Work like this is going to allow us to know whether those are populations like around Fiji, that are very small in number and not recovering, or perhaps one of the more abundant populations where the impact is. Thank you, Bruce. Consistent. And now it's my distinct honor to introduce the guest of the hour and someone we've all been Looking forward to hearing from Terry Irwin. Thanks. I'm glad to see everybody today. I just um, wanted to let you know that, on a spiritual point of view, if you ever had any doubt that there was life after life, I can assure you there is. Steve always had a sense of humor when he was here, particularly with me. He had the ability of encouraging me not only to do whatever I thought I could do, but things that I never thought I could do. <laughs> I've never had an affinity with the ocean. In fact, it basically scares the daylights out of me. <laughs> not because of what's in it, but just the big waves and the deep blue and all of the unknown, you know? It's just kind of a scary, scary, vast area. After um, some consideration with uh, marine work, Steve decided to get a research vessel purpose-built so that I could be comfortable and we could go out and do crocodile research and uh, all kinds of rescue, from whales and sea turtles to dugongs and sea snakes. He called the vessel Crop One. 
I suggested that we rename the boat, and I thought my name was much better. I suggested we call it For Sale. <laughs> <laughs> but Steve didn't go for that, and we ended up with this wonderful boat that does wonderful things. After we lost Steve, I thought, you know, what am I going to do now? And I just waited for opportunities to arrive. And my uh, zoo uh, general manager came to me and he said, you'll never guess what, the only whale watching company on the Sunshine Coast has just come to us and said their company's for sale. Do you want, do you want to buy it? And I went, oh, great. <laughs> what was it? A million dollars later, I now have two boats and a whale watching company. <laughs> so we're taking people out with a, a greater appreciation of whales. It is interesting that um, whaling generates somewhere between 40 and 60 million dollars a year, and whale watching generates well in excess of a billion dollars a year. So, from a business point of view, it's kind of crazy to harpoon them when you can generate a lot more money looking at them. So, uh, this was one component, and the research, of course, is another incredibly valuable part of our work. With the research we're embarking on, I wanted to do something both in the northern and southern hemispheres. And with Bruce's guidance, we've decided on these locations. And I'm, I'm very excited. I um, also have been talking extensively to Paul Watson, who has the organization called Sea Shepherd. And I told a friend of mine, after hearing what you said, Bruce, I told a friend of mine, I was so excited because Paul said to me, any time you need a boat with an ice-breaking hull to go to Antarctica, let me know. Oh, sweet! I got an ice-breaking hull! <laughs> and the woman I told said, I got diamond earrings! <laughs> but that kind of pales in comparison. So um, I think just with a, a little bit of further talk and nailing down dates, we'll be off to Antarctica. Whoopee! <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting so, how things turn out. I think... Um, Steve also um, had a sense of humor about where I'm from because he appreciated the fact that I'm from Eugene, home of the Fighting Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he would say, I think I have a bit more affinity with the beaver. And uh, thank you. <laughs> I said, that's lovely. And now, of course, here I am, a guy in the wool duck. Lining myself up with the fevers. <laughs> yeah. I think Steve as a crocodile hunter was so successful in bringing people closer to, to wildlife. I just don't think Bruce will make it work with the title of whale hunter. It just, <laughs> it just doesn't have the same flow. But uh, he definitely is to whales what Steve was to crocodiles. And uh, it's a real honor to be working with him and working with Oregon State University and everyone here. So thank you very much. I actually had read before you said it uh, today, Terry, that uh, you know this was this was a little strange for you making this adaptation to uh, uh, becoming part of Beaver Nation, given your uh, background, and, and you made a pledge that you would uh, try very hard to get in touch with the Beaver part of your personality. And, and this actually is a gift that's intended to uh, help you with the transition. Wow, this is exciting. <laughs> Yeah, I'm purple. What can I do?